Hey everyone, I'm Jessica from JewelryTutorialHQ.com and Bespangled Beads on Etsy. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you my top tips and tricks for making knotted cord jewelry. The first tip is plan ahead. As much as possible, try and plan out your entire design before you even make your first knot. You want to plan out how long you want your finished piece to be, decide how often you're going to make knots. Are you going to knot between each and every bead? Or are you going to make a pattern knotting every third bead? You want to decide how you're going to finish the piece. Are you going to attach a clasp? Or are you going to want to make a sliding knot, for example? All of these things are going to help you figure out how much cord you need to start with. So along those lines, number two, determine your knot factor. Each material has what I call a knot factor. This is basically how much room each knot takes up and it's gonna be different for every material. So a piece of three millimeter leather is gonna have a bigger knot factor than a piece of one millimeter cotton cord or silk thread. So to figure out your knot factor, what I do, start with a length, a nice even number, and a ruler with that nice even length. So I've got eight inches. Make one knot and measure it again. So now I have seven and three quarter inches. That means my knot factor for this waxed linen cord that I like to use is 0.25 inches. That means every four knots is gonna take up one inch of length off my cord that I start with. I also want you to keep in mind that the knot factor is not just a function of the material's diameter, but of the, the material itself. So I've got a two millimeter cotton cord and a two millimeter leather cord. They have different knot factors because the cotton cord will knot up nice and tightly and the leather cord is a, a lot stiffer so it doesn't make as, as tight a knot so it takes up more space. So once you've planned out your design and you've figured out your knot factor, now you can do a little bit of math. I know, it's like a bad word. Sometimes it is nice to know exactly how much cord you need to start with. Say you're running low on your cord supply and you don't want to waste a single inch. But I'm not going to bore you and let you watch me do math in my head, so I'm going to put this part on the blog and you can read all about how I go about determining how much cord to use specifically. There is a general rule of thumb if you don't care about wasting material or you don't like doing math or you just don't want to plan ahead. The general rule is for a bracelet, you're going to start with a length of cord that's as long as your arm. So from your wrist to your armpit for a bracelet. And if it's a necklace, double that, two lengths of your arm. However, if you're working with a doubled over cord like you do sometimes when you're knotting pearl, then you're going to want to double those numbers again. So for a necklace, it would be four times the length of your arm, and for a bracelet, it would be two times the length of your arm. My number four tip, and this is probably one of the best tips that I have for you, is to use an awl or a knotting tool. Now, if you've been trying to make knotted jewelry and you haven't been using any tool like this with a sharp pointed tapered tip, you're probably going crazy trying to figure out how you get the knot to land right up against the bead. This is how you do it, guys. I show you how to use an awl to knot up against a bead in another video, and I'll also be adding a demonstration of using the knotting tool, which I'll link to below the video when it's ready, along with this one. Number five, learn how to make double and triple knots the right way. You might think that just making a double knot, you can just tie one knot right over the top of another knot. Well, it doesn't exactly work that way. What you're gonna get is two smaller knots the same size right next to each other. So that's not gonna help you if you need a bigger knot to stop a bead from slipping over. So to make a double knot, you're gonna start by making a regular overhand knot. Before you pull it tight, you're gonna loop the end up through the knot one more time. And then pull it tight. And if you wanna make a triple knot, you do the same make a regular knot, and then pull the end back around through two more times, and then pull it tight.
and you'll have a nice big knot. My number six tip, save the scraps. And I don't mean all of your scraps, but save some of your scraps. Um, so none of those one, two inch pieces, that's not necessary, but anything that's, you know, five, six inches or longer. When I make adjustable sliding knots, I use a separate piece to tie the knot around the ends of a bracelet or necklace that's already made. This piece is perfect for something like that. That's why I always save my scraps. My last top tip for you today is that beeswax is your friend. Use beeswax on the ends of your thread and cord to prevent fraying and along the length of the cord to help prevent tangling and twisting while you're working. So that's it for my cord knotting tips and tricks. I will share with you in another couple of videos more specifics on pearl knotting techniques as well as working with waxed cord, which is one of my favorite things to work with. I hope you found this video today useful and I would love to hear from you if you have comments or questions or if you'd like to share your top tips for knotting cord. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.